Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with the review of the Airhog's Helix Ion. Uh, now this is like a little ultra micro or nano size version of the uh, Helix X4 stunt that came out a while ago. Uh, so kind of cool, it's you know got this ducted fan design with the three blade props. And this is all foam, this is a foam body, so really super you know safe and protected and durable. Uh, so just a really great quad for any beginner, you know, a kid or, you know, if you just want to fly around the house. Uh, I wouldn't take this outdoors. I mean, you could fly it outdoors. It is 2.4 gigahertz, uh, but it's a little bit underpowered and heavy. And then the big foam body is going to catch wind. So this is really best left indoors. But, I mean, you can fly this around the house and just, just beat it up. Just crash it into everything, no problem. So just a really great model. Uh, for any beginner. Uh, and a more experienced pilot will probably be a little bit disappointed with it uh, because it isn't, you know, it's not super agile or anything like that. It only has a three axis gyro, uh, but just, you know, the sort of natural aerodynamics of it and the, the uh, ducted fan design, it, it naturally has self riding, so it will level itself. But there's no accelerometer doing that, so it can, you know, get in a vortex state sometime where it gets caught up in its own prop wash and it'll get a, a little bit unstable. Or if it's, you know, you move it too fast or try to do something too fancy, it can get a little bit wobbly. Uh, but if you keep it nice and slow, it's, you know, it's a good flying quad. Uh, when it gets pretty low on the battery, it gets extra unstable. So uh, towards the end of the battery life, it's, it's you know... I, I would cut it, call, I would stop your flight early because, you know, the last 30 seconds or so of the flight, this thing is pretty much out of control. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to the transmitter here. The Air Hogs has kind of gotten a new design to their transmitter here recently, and the uh, throttle does stay where you put it, which is pretty normal for their quadcopters. They seem to be doing that. Uh, but it is, you know, full four channel control, so your left stick is throttle and left and left and right yaw to turn it and the right stick is your pitch so forward and backward and left and right pitch all the directions it leans in and then in the, the back right here you've got a button that you can press and that that just does an automatic flip you don't you don't get to pick the direction you flip you just press that button and it'll automatically do a flip um, I forget if it does them I think it does them in each different version, you know, so like one time it would be a right flip, then a forward flip, then a left flip, then a back flip, I believe, I can't recall for sure, but anyway, it's all just automated, you just hit a button and it'll do a flip. Uh, these are the rates here on the switch, uh, which is a little bit backwards to me, this is actually high rates on the left, and that's low rates on the right, uh, I don't, I don't really know what these indicators are meant to show, to me it kind of seems like that should be high rates, where it shows all these like, I don't know, more motion or something, but anyway, that's high rates on the left. Um, it does have little LED eyes here in the front there, so you see those green uh, blinking eyes. Those change with the different rates. I can go ahead and turn it on. Um, so I think, yeah, there we go. So on high rates, they are red. I think because I picked it up, it got, there we go. So now you can see I'm on left switch, that's red. Right switch is green, so that's kind of cool. A little LED color changes to, to show you which rate you're on. Go ahead and turn that back off. Um, oh, and there is uh, one thing I've, I've talked about with Air Hogs for a long time is, you know, they, they always give you this option to charge off the transmitter, which is cool for, you know, on the go and convenience's sake. But if, you know, if you're at home and you want to save your batteries, I keep asking, you know, we need a, a USB charger. Give us a USB option. Well, they haven't given us, you know, a USB plug yet, but they did give us a pass-through now on the charger. So this is just a normal USB uh, plug. It doesn't come with the cable, but, I mean, I would imagine most of us have this cable already laying around at home. I don't know exactly what that uh, plug type is called. I think it's mini USB or something. Uh, but you plug your USB cable into that, you know, and connect it to a power source, and now it charges through the cable onto the power source instead of using the internal batteries. So that's a pretty cool option. I like that. So now we at least have the option to charge without using the controller's batteries. 
Um, and so, like yeah, I said, it did have two rates. Uh, the yaw rate does not change with the rates, and it's a pretty slow yaw. Again, like I said, this isn't really a sporty quad. It's it's meant more for the younger kids and you know beginners. And so it's an you know an easy flyer, not super fast rates, and not a super fast yaw rate. Uh, let's see. It it has a 140 milliamp hour internal battery. You know, so it's all. It's all built into this foam. You're not going to be replacing it or swapping it out. Uh, it takes about 27 minutes to charge. You get about five and a half minute long flights with a 30 second LVC warning. So the, the lights will blink there as the battery gets close to dying. Uh, so you get about six minute long flights. Though, like I said, I'd cut it short at like five minutes probably uh, because that end of the flight there just gets really out of control and underpowered. Um, and again, with the with the heavy weight and in the no accelerometer, it can get a little bit unstable after a flip, and sometimes have a slow recovery, especially later in the flight. So I would do your flips right towards the beginning of the battery, and then later in the flight, I wouldn't do flips because they'll get out of control. Uh, let's see. I think yeah, that covers all the details. So let's go take it for a flight. All right, this is a flight review of the Airhog's Helix Ion, a little ultra micro quad with the ducted fans and the foam body. Real good one for young kids or beginners. And go ahead and give her a flight. And this one is, you know, it's pretty slow and it can get wobbly, so you don't want to get too aggressive with it. But like I said, you know, this is for beginners or kids, so I think it would work well for them. Experienced pilots are probably going to try to push it a little harder than it likes to go, though. Well, right now I'm on low rates, as you can see from the green eyes. If I flip this switch to the left, now I've got red eyes on there. And now it's on high rates, so you can get it a little bit faster, but still not super fast. And like I said, you don't want to get too crazy with it, or it will get a little wobbly. But when it's got a good full battery, it, it stays pretty stable. And you just press the right bumper for an automatic flip, and it just does them, whoa. It just does a, you know, flip in each different direction. You don't get to pick your own direction. You just hit the bumper, and it'll do it on its own. Pretty good flips, though. Again, when it's on full battery, as this thing gets low on battery, it starts to have some problems with uh, stability and recovering from stuff. So you want to stop flying it once you notice it starts to get low and you can't keep up with things. But when the battery is nice and full, it's not bad. And I mean, like I said, you know, it's well protected, and you know that foam and the ducted fans. You're not gonna hurt yourself or anybody or your furniture or anything so definitely a good one for kids or you know complete beginners that want to learn how to fly without having to worry about hurting anything So the yaw rate, I guess. Oh, it's kind of going a little crazy. Let me let it even out. All right. So there's our yaw rate. So not not super fast, but good enough. Whoa! I feel like the battery's starting to get a little weak. It's having a little trouble here and there. Try a flip and see what happens. Yeah, see, so you're getting a little, little wobbly coming out of the flip as the battery gets weaker. It definitely has, you know, loses the power to stay stable. This doesn't have any accelerometers in it. It's just a three-axis gyro, so you know the, the leveling and stability is basically done via the ducted fans and aerodynamics it doesn't have any auto leveling um, electronics in it 
All right, well, I think the battery is getting a little low. I can feel it getting a little weak, so take her in for a landing. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, it's too late, I think. That's full throttle. There we go. Come on, land. Not bad. All right, well, there we go. That's the Air Hogs Helix Ion. I like the size. It's really nice for flying in the house and definitely a good one for kids and beginners. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about getting, you know, a, a new quad for a kid for Christmas or something, this is definitely a good one to consider. So uh, check the video description for price and purchase link, or you can get it, you know, in toy stores, Walmart, Toys R Us, Target, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.